journey through the sermon series on prayer. Uh, we're looking at various aspects of prayer uh, and what prayer is all about. Um, prayer is a conversation with God. Prayer is when we boldly enter into God's presence and share our requests before God. Prayer is a time for us to examine ourselves as well, where we reflect on what God is doing in our lives, where we go into that deeper space of deeper relationship with God. And last week, we also learned prayer is also a prayer of surrender. We learn from the story of Jesus where Jesus surrendered and prayed um, to God. Last week, Pastor Joanne reminded us that we need to surrender some of the judgments that we hold towards ourselves. And we were challenged to surrender our unknowns, our future, and most importantly, our life. When we begin to surrender our life to God, we begin to see God's purposes shape up uh, in our own lives as well. This morning, I want to focus our discussion on intercessory prayer. It sounds like a fancy word. Essentially, what it means is praying for those who are in need. Not necessarily praying for yourself, but praying for another person. We, both, we go before God's throne and we pray for those who are in need. For those who are in need of God's touch. I want to share this story with you. Some of you might have heard this story. Uh, but it's an important story for me to share because this story is something that has shaped me um, at a young age, at a formative time in my own life. And this story grounds me. This is about intercessory prayer, praying for somebody else. When I was in college, one of my best friend's mom was diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. My friend's mom was a good person. She was an excellent wife, a wonderful mom to her two kids. She was someone that made you laugh. When you hung around her, you laughed and you laughed and laughed. She was an excellent cook, even better a baker. And she was diagnosed with cancer in the late 90s. During that same period of time, uh, our church that I was part of um, was going through a revival in itself. Uh, it was going through a time where a lot of young people were really excited about what God was doing. We had a very active young adult ministry that I was part of. We had an active youth group uh, that we were part of. And we would do um, all night prayers. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Essentially about 30 or 40 of us uh, would gather together. Yes, 30 or 40 young people, uh, all between the ages of 16 to about 20, 25, would gather together um, from about 10 p.m. and we would pray till about 5 a.m. We would invite different speakers to come uh, and share with us. Uh, it was really an incredible time of prayer. Sounds strange, doesn't it? You all can say yes, right? Like, have you heard of young people spending an entire night in prayer? That was our church. That's who we were, and that is, that's the church uh, that I belong to. And as my friend's mom was going through treatments, uh, chemo treatments, I began to organize uh, a prayer chain. Uh, essentially, what we decided to do was that every hour of the day, somebody was praying for my friend's mom. And these prayers were offered, uh, with, were sincere. We prayed for God's protection over her. We prayed, um, these prayers that were offered were filled with hope. For once, for once, I did not doubt that our prayers were not going to be answered. And the reason we were praying for my best friend's mom is because we are reminded in the scriptures. We are reminded in the scripture that Jesus himself intercedes on our behalf. That Jesus prays on our behalf. That's what we read in Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who is raised to life, is at the right hand of God. And is also interceding for us. Here Jesus is said to be praying for us. For you and for me. That Jesus every day. He got a new job description. After he was risen from the dead. And his job description was. That he is praying for you. That he's praying for me. For each and every one of us. That is where 
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is doing right now. Praying on behalf of you and for me. And as followers of Christ, we are called to do the same thing. We are called to pray for those who are in need. That's who we are. That is our basis as to why we are called to pray for someone else. So this morning's scripture that we read, that Barb read to us this today, uh, it is a story about prayer. It's an unusual story. There's a group called Amalekites, and they went to battle with the Israelites. Um, Israelites were actually still in the wilderness when this was happening. It's a real re quick recap of the story of the Israelites. They were held in, uh, in slavery in Egypt, and Moses shows up as their spiritual leader and delivers them from slavery, and he's taking them into the promised land that God had said that he would give them. And on their way to this promised land, the Amalekites showed up and they were in battle with the Israelites. Moses was the spiritual leader. Joshua was their military leader. And Joshua goes to battle with these individuals, this group called Amalekites. And when Moses, when Joshua goes into battle, Moses goes on a mountaintop and there he begins to pray. He begins to pray with his hands raised up. And as long as his hands were raised up, the Israelites were winning the battle. And the minute he put his hands down, they started to lose. So the two assistants, Aaron and Hur, two, these two individuals show up to Moses' aid. And they literally lift up Moses' hands in the air. And God hears Moses' prayers and then the Israelites win the battle. Joshua is led to victory on the battlefield. That was the military battle that they won. But Aaron and Hur helped Moses pray so that they could win the battle. When I read this story, when I read this story over and over again, I have so many questions. Why was it important that Moses kept his hands up? Anybody? I can, I'm moving to here. I, I don't know. You know, in nowhere in the Old Testament, when you read it, there's not really um, a formula as to what we need to do physically when we offer prayers. Have you noticed that? Right? There are other religions that kind of command for that, saying if you're praying, you need to do this. Nowhere in the Old Testament uh, are we told that we need to face a certain direction, a physical direction when we are praying. But yet, we read that in Daniel, when he was in exile, when he was away from home in, um, in Babylon, he looked to Jerusalem, he looked eastward and prayed. Right? But from this story, why is the physical posture of prayer important? Could Moses have just said one prayer that morning and it would have been fine for them to win the battle? But this story is about intercessory prayer, praying for others. This story is about praying for others. That is what Moses was doing. Moses was praying for others, not for himself. He was praying for the army that was in battle. That's what the story it's about prayers for others, much like the way we were praying for my friend's mother. This morning, I want to ask you this question, and I would like you to ponder on this. Who in your life needs prayer? Who in your life needs prayer this morning? Who in your life needs to be rescued from addiction? Who in your life needs prayers or being rescued from a toxic relationship? Who in your life needs a blessing? You look at their life and you say, God, just have mercy on this person. They need to be pulled out from that pit that they're in and put on a solid ground. They just need a blessing in their life. Who needs that, friends? Who needs God in their life? 
prayers for salvation. I want you to hold those individuals in your heart as we go through the rest of the sermon. I want you to picture them in your heart. Hold them in your heart. And we have a card here as well. Maybe later today you can write their names on it as a reminder that you could pray, continue to pray for them. The next logical question that we need to ask is when we stand there and intercede, when we lift our hands up and we pray for those who are in need, does God answer that prayer? Does God answer that prayer? Last week, um, I was at church and I was talking to um, somebody here and our conversations was just, it was nothing intentional, but I heard this story. It was just this past week. The story was told to me that um, this person's friend was really ill. He, he was on a ventilator and he was there with his friends and the family and the doctor showed up and they said, I don't think we can do much for your son. And this individual who I was talking to here at this church went around, put his hand on his friend and said a prayer. God, in your mercy, please have mercy on him. Then all the friends went home and they were literally waiting for the inevitable. They were waiting to get the word. And slowly things started to change. For this individual. And he recovered. He fully recovered. He is active. He is walking. He is alive. And this person said. I know it was a prayer. I know it was a prayer. That happened. Let me go back to the story. That I started with this morning. My friend's mom. I had no doubt in my heart. When we were doing that prayer, that she was going to be 100% cured. If you ask me, Johnson, did you really believe God would do this? I would say 100%. Yes. We had people setting their alarms at 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. to get up in the middle of the night, early morning, to say a prayer. I would say 100%. We knew that God was going to do something beautiful here. And I remember an August afternoon, standing next to my best friend, him looking at me and asking this question, Johnson, you said mom would be fine, that mom would live if he prayed. Why did mom, why did God take my mom's life? Friends, I stood there next to my friend with tears rolling down. Even as I tell this story, I get tears in my eyes because I can see my friend's hurt. The hope that was lost. The prayers that were unanswered. This is a professional hazard for me. People tell their stories to me all the time. People tell their stories. Whenever I'm around people, they just happen to tell their stories. And I can tell, give you countless stories of how God showed up in a certain person's life. How God miraculously showed up. I heard stories that start something like this. I know this is going to sound bizarre. There is no way humanly this is possible, but let me tell you what God did. Let me tell you what God did. The words like, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I really think God answered my prayer when I was in need of prayer. And then I've heard other stories. Other stories that are not filled with miracles, but stories of gratitude. I'm so grateful for the way God moved my life. I'm so grateful that God provided me with the right things. God, can you to care for our children? I'm so grateful for that. Friends, if you look around this church, you know those stories. 
You know those crazy, ridiculous stories as to how God showed up? And then there are stories where God did not show up. How we prayed and prayed and prayed, and there was no answer that we wanted from God. I shared the story about my fr friend's mother 20 years ago, and it's really sad. But there are more stories like that for me. Just this, this past month, uh, I officiated a funeral for a 27-year-old young man. I met this young man when he was in junior high. He died of narcolepsy. And I sat with his parents. And we cried as we planned the funeral service. As we sh told stories about him. In that case, God didn't show up. So what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do when we see God's movement on one side, when we see that God shows up and does something absolutely crazy and we say, that has to be God. And on the other side, we pray and we hope and nothing happens. What are we to do? Do we just say, what's the point of praying for those who are in need? If God answers prayers, great. If God doesn't, great. Oh, well. God knows everything. So why even bother praying? What do we do? And I think these are legitimate questions for us to struggle with, for us to consider. Here's what I would like to offer. If you are asking those questions and saying, okay, what's the point of prayer? Here is what I would like to offer this morning. I would like to offer this. See, when you read the stories from the Gospels, when you read about Jesus, when you read about Jesus, when you see how he spoke about prayer, his disciples went to him and said, Jesus, how do we pray? Teach us. To pray, we don't know how to pray. Can you please teach us? And Jesus said, this is something we say every week. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The image that Jesus gives us is the way we are called to look at God is as if we are looking at a parent. That is how we are supposed to reach out to our God as a child reaches out to his mother or father. We are called to reach out to our God as a parent. And then later in Luke chapter 11, this is what, this is what Jesus tells them. Luke 11, reading from verse 11. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorp scorpion? If you then... I love these words, verse 13. If you then, though you are evil, know to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly Father in heaven will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here, Jesus simply is comparing an earthly parent to the God who is a parent to us all. To our Father, our Heavenly Father. My kids are in the sanctuary today, and they remind me of one constant truth. They remind me every single day, I would say several times a day, actually about 10 or 15 times an hour, that I am a human being, that I'm not perfect. They remind me of all the ways that I've failed them. And yet, and yet, they ask me. They ask me to feed them. They don't say, my dad knows to feed us. He'll feed me when I'm ready. No, they actually, on the contrary, they ask me to feed them as if I haven't fed them in 10 days. 
They constantly ask me things. And I love doing stuff for them. I love doing stuff for them. They continue to share with me how things are at school. They tell me stories about their friends. I love listening to those stories. They tell me how they're doing in life. What they want to do in the future. Which sports they love to play. And they ask me for stuff. And I'm happy to give it to them. Friends, I want to remind you that the God we worship is like a parent who wishes good things for us. Our God invites us to pray. Our God invites each one of us sitting here to seek his face despite the results that we might want or want to see in the end. We are still called to seek the face of our God. This morning, I want to end with this image. As I told you this story about intercession, it's about praying for others. Moses was praying for others. He was not necessarily praying for himself, but he was interceding on the behalf of the people of Israel who were in battle. That is what intercession is. But I want to give you this image. I want to focus not on Moses, but on Aaron and a man named Hur, H-U-R. They both stood next to Moses and they lifted his arms up. Moses was praying, but Aaron and Hur came next to him and they lifted his arms up. That's what they did. Friends, this morning, who needs prayers in your life? Who is it that is in need of healing? Who is it that is in need of a blessing? Who is it that is in need of God's saving grace? Who is that? When you picture them, I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine standing next to them and lifting them up in prayer. Lifting them up in prayer. Because that's what intercessory prayer is all about. Standing next to somebody and lifting them up in prayer. We're called to do that. Don't worry about the answers. Don't worry about the answers. Don't worry if God is listening to your prayer or not. Friends, we are called to lift up those who are in need of prayer. God loves us so much more than our earthly parents could have ever have shown us love. May you seek this God's face. May you seek this God's face and may you be like Aaron and her and lift up the person who needs prayers. Let us pray. God, we lift up those who are in need of healing this day. Let's respond by saying, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we lift up these individuals who need a blessing in their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we lift up those who are in need of your saving grace. Those dear to us, we want them to have the same saving grace that we have experienced. God, we lift these individuals. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, in this moment of silence, receive our prayers. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Friends, at this time I want to invite us to continue worshiping our God with our tithes and our offering. We give to God as a token of our gratitude for all the many blessings he has given us. Let us worship our God.